Yeah, our approach is really quite different than every, anything you'll find out there. So we take a pure mathematical approach. We believe that you can actually identify attacks long before they ever start and then truly prevent them. And this is done through what we call AI prediction. We've trained computers uh, over millions and millions and millions of files and attacks to learn exactly what makes them up, so the DNA of these attacks. And by understanding the DNA mathematically now, we can prevent and protect future attacks. So they'll look like we're predicting attacks, but really we've just learned through AI and machine learning what the DNA of attacks are. Well, we see ourselves today as obviously a, applying artificial intelligence to cybersecurity in a truly preventative, predictive way. But we see the company expanding far beyond cybersecurity. I mean, the techniques that we are using are very applicable to other areas and fields of study. Anything that you want to try and classify effectively, these machine learning algorithms can do uh, amazing things. So, for example, another application might be healthcare or diagnostics, for example, an MRI scan, being able to detect early forms of cancer or disease in the brain, things of that nature. Anything that's data-driven, that's the beauty of the machine learning algorithms. They take large amounts of data that you and I would fall asleep trying to process, and they never forget what they process and they can learn from that to make great decisions going forward. Well, the old approach is signature-based, and what that means is you have to actually see somebody get attacked first before you can protect everyone else. So a uh, human being usually has to be in the mix, uh, and human beings are uh, very difficult to scale, uh, especially in our business. So being able to hire enough security analysts to take all of the attacks that happen every day and write signatures for them is an untenable prospect for business uh, to scale. So what we do with the artificial intelligence is really do uh, use machines for what they're really good at and then we use humans for what they're really good at. And the human element of all of this is if the, the attack bypasses the artificial intelligence, which is very, very rare, it's a very complex attack. It's something that we truly haven't seen before and it's the humans that need to go and understand exactly what happened, how it was bypassed, and, and what new features or characteristics that we have to train the machines on. So it's the same thing in the real world. If you apply AI to those things that machines do really well and humans don't, and you move the human talent into that which they do really well, which is creative and uh, handling very difficult uh, topics, then you're going to be successful. Yeah, so attribution in cyberspace is almost 100% fruitless. I mean, it's so easy for me as a security professional or a hacker to actually make any attack look like it's coming from anybody. It's just too simple to be anonymous online. So the jump to the who uh, really does us a disservice. And what we need to think about is the how. Like, how did these individuals get in? how was it so easy, why was it so easy, and sort of address it at that level, because 99% of the attacks out there that happen every day are everyday ankle biter attacks. They're nothing new. We've seen them a hundred, a thousand times. So why, if they're so simple, were they not prevented? That's the bigger question. And that's what I'd love people to focus on. I mean, the who is sort of fruitless. Yeah, sure, so denial of service is one of three really core hacks that uh, work um, every day around the world. But, and it's actually the smallest portion of attacks, but when they hit, they're really dramatic. Uh, they can drop services, drop websites, they can uh, impact everything from patient care to oil and gas pipelines. It just, it, it's that wide range. And in this case, the attack occurred because uh, hackers were able to actually get into um, embedded systems like video cameras and printers and other uh, sorts of, uh, of equipment and use very simple uh, uh, techniques to do it. So they used default usernames and passwords predominantly. And then by getting access to those devices, then they were able to point millions upon millions of those devices to uh, one particular or uh, a set of particular DNS names. And because Dyne was the particular DNS at the time, by asking Dyne so many requests for so many of, uh, of these domain names, it would literally drop the service. And it is the, it's an inevitable problem for us in cyberspace to know what is legitimate versus illegitimate traffic 
is actually quite challenging. And this is also where I think AI would be a perfect application for it. You know, of the three types of attacks, execution is the largest one, getting something to execute in the remote target's memory. Second is identity, authentication-based, things like using usernames and passwords to bypass uh, authentication. And third is denial of service, but all three can uh, use AI to solve that, that core problem. We'll see bigger attacks, there's no doubt about it. It's just too easy to get it done. Um, we'll also see, I think, bigger attacks around ransomware, which seems to be very, very popular because it is so easy. And I do predict some large ransomware attacks on mobile uh, for the first time ever because it is so simple to, to get those kind of attacks to work. So between denial of service, between ransomware attacks, um, even embedded system attacks, we'll definitely start to see more of that.